Bienvenue au podcast 20 ans de souvenirs, une édition spéciale que personne ne va comprendre. Oh, or maybe not. <laughs> Morrowind is a journey that we took on our own and today we're going to discover one such journey. My guest is Cliff Worms, a mother who's been very active in the Elder Scrolls community for the last 20 years. Welcome on in. Well, thank you for uh, getting me here. It's pretty cool. Well, I'm glad that we could, uh, you know, talk because yeah. uh, we, we have lots to talk about. Yes. <laughs> That's such really, a long journey. I have one question. It's like, what is your Morrowind journey? But considering it's been 20 years, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> it's so, a heck of a journey. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, how did it all start? It? Um, well, yeah, so like you said, I've been in the Elder Scrolls community for a long time. Um, I started with Daggerfall, which I got for Christmas. And this is what introduced me to Western RPGs. Uh, and before that, I was only playing uh, Japanese RPGs on the Super Nintendo, such as Final Fantasy, so I had no idea what a Western RPG was. So, uh, yeah, anyway, got Daggerfall Christmas, I was flabbergasted. Uh, if some of If some of the people listening know me, they know that I have a huge love for Daggerfall. But we're talking about Morrowind, so... <laughs> we, we can talk about Daggerfall yeah. too, like it's Elder Scrolls, yeah. it's, it's family. Uh, it's Yeah, it's all family, absolutely. <laughs> um, But, uh, why, why were you flabbergasted with Daggerfall? Like, what was it that drew you into the game? Uh, it was the huge open world, I had never seen that in a game before, and I, I know that some games that were released on the PC before Daggerfall had such an open world, like for, for like arena, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, and um, and the Might and Magic series as well. But I had never played those ones before I tried Daggerfall. So it was really open world, and I, I was a kid back then. I know it was not a kid-friendly game at all, but uh, my parents, like, they never looked at the age rating. <laughs> On Good. Games, they they never came in your room while you were playing, and you happened to be in a temple of Dibella with the with yeah. the sexy lake, naked ladies in there. I would quickly uh, exit <laughs> the game at that, mo at that moment. Um, oh yeah, because I mean, Daggerfall it has violence, gore, nudity. Uh, it was supposed to have sex, but it did not have any. But it's still in the game files. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> So what you mean Daggerfall? Yeah, it's the open world and and since I was a kid I was like full of imagination. So I was always role playing, like really getting into my characters, role playing them, talking to myself more or less when I was chatting with the NPCs and making my own personal adventures. Um, it was just this huge open world where you could do almost whatever you wanted and be whoever you wanted to be, which is the traditional motto of the Elder Scrolls. I think mm. God Howard said so when he introduced Morrowind. Um, so it was, yeah, it was this huge world where you, where you could do whatever you want. Um, so what was your, and... your state of mind when you, you learned that there would be Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind? Oh man, <laughs> I was I was really excited. I saw that on the forums. Because, yeah, I joined the, the elder, the official forums before Mo Morrowind was announced. It was in 2000, I think. I joined the forums, and people were just speculating about the next Elder Scrolls game. Nobody really knew what was going to be like, and then it was announced, and people were crazy excited. And um, I was really excited too. I was like, okay, we're gonna go into a whole new province and discover a whole new people, a whole new race that we didn't really encounter in Daggerfall. And then, uh, then I saw the there was a preview on, in the PC Gamer magazine with the early, really early pre-release screenshots, and it was just seeing this whole outer world, uh, this whole architecture, such such a strange architecture and world and how the the Dunmers were um, the type of clothes and armor they were wearing it was just a whole new different level from Daggerfall which is which was really the pure dungeon and dragon simulator mm -hmm. more or less yeah so we're really getting into a whole new world new style and this is what got me excited most uh, when the game was announced yeah. okay. And when you finally played the game, were you disappointed? 
Not at all. Um, <laughs> well, of course, I I drew lots of comparisons with Daggerfall, of course, and it was not as huge. But then again, Daggerfall, when you look at it, it's more or less the same stuff. Uh, you more or less encounter the same stuff as you play the game. Same cities look alike, and the dungeons are hell, and they look alike too. <laughs> um, so Morrowind was just this hand handmade and hand-placed world, and that made a huge difference to get immersed in that world. And mm. um, yeah, the well, w one of my first and favorite memories of Morrowind, the kind of memories that you just wish you could get your memory erased so that you could you uh, could um, experience it again. Personal I, fantasy of mine. Forget all yeah. about Morrowind and discover it again. It would be awesome just to go back. And... But aren't you afraid that maybe twenty years later, without you know any of the nostalgia? Maybe you just wouldn't like it as much. You mean as if I've never played it before and I just tried it 20 years later? Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure that would be the case, yes. Um, <laughs> it's an old game. It was made in a whole different mindset from what games are today. So yeah, I'm pretty sure I would not have the same, uh, the same positive experience as someone who would have tried it 20 years ago. Mm. And um, yes, my, my favorite memory was just uh, I got the typical quest of uh, finding uh, our good friend Fargot. Fargots, I think. Fargot, yeah. Yeah, Fargot. So his hiding place. So you have to get to the lighthouse on top and watch at night, see uh, where where he goes. And instead of waiting in game, instead of waiting until it was night, I just waited until it was five or six p.m. I just looked at the sunset and all the way down until the night arrived, and I was so impressed it was such a such a lovely experience to, you know uh, you, you're not the, the first person telling me that one of their first strongest memories was just being there and looking at the sky sunset nighttime as well mm -hmm. the the sky is i mean e even today it's so well made compared to games that were released in the same in the same year mm -hmm. um and still holds pretty good today. Um, lots of the models and Morin and textures, yeah, they they're they're a bit dated today, of course. But the sky, it's I, I think it's one of the few resources that is just as beautiful today as it was mm. 20 years ago. Agreed. I'm running 800 miles right now. I've reduced my mod list to 800, <laughs> uh, but my sky texture is vanilla. Oh, great! It's yeah, just good. It's, it's just yeah. good. It's beautiful to look at the night sky, uh, the uh, the blight, the blight uh, storms, the ash storms. Such incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Except when you're looking for something and you don't see anything. Yeah, there's that. I think the worst one is uh, the snowstorms in Blood Moon. A mm -hmm. snowstorm at night. Mm -hmm. Man, good good luck finding your way. Uh, and then of course they, they kill your FPS as well. So it's like double yeah. pain. <laughs> yeah, there is that as well. <laughs> um, you said that you were drawing comparisons between Daggerfall and Morrowind, so w what were they? Um, well, the gold has no weight in Morrowind. There are no banks. <laughs> yes. That was pretty cool. That, that was a cool feature, even if it was more of a realism um, feature. Mm -hmm. But it was just pretty cool that you could not carry millions of septims in your inventory you had to go deposit to a bank <laughs> um house purchase was pretty cool as well this was it was another way to get immersed in your world you could go to a city and say well this is now my hometown i'll go take a loan from the bank buy myself a house and pay my loan or um as i do my adventure stuff and earn my gold mm -hmm. so this was a pretty cool feature um having a mount as well. But then again, Morrowind is not a huge... I don't think mounts would have worked pretty well, but still, it would have been cool to have a pack Guar or just a Guar to to ride. And I think... No, it was not. No. I, I, sorry, I'm a bit confused. I think in the early pictures, there was a, a, a Don Morrowind mounting a pack Guar, but I think I'm pretty much mistaken. Maybe it was a concept art. Could have uh, been. Yeah, could have been because we we had but, to yeah. wait for mods about ten years ago for the actual 
riding guar mod. Yeah. Before that, there were the horses mods. Yeah, uh, Pegasus Ranch was... horse. Um, a horse ranch. There we go. Exactly. And there was it's another like one before my... that. I shouldn't have done that introduction in French now. I'm, I'm switching word order. <laughs> and I was trying to be funny. Joke's on me. <laughs> ah, ça parle en français. Non. Bon, bah, tant pis, euh, on va faire en français, alors. On va faire en français, merci. Donc, euh, voilà. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, was, there was a horse mod before the uh, Pegasus. Pegasus range, uh, range mod. I remember one. It's it was really in the early early modding scene of Morrowind. Maybe it was 2003. So I still remember this one. It's it was an early mod. So the horse was basically it was split in two different models. One was a boots that you could wear. Mm -hmm. So it was an item, a boots with the model of a the lower part of a horse. <laughs> And the upper part of the horse was, I think, the greaves or... Yeah, I think it was the greaves or the gauntlets, I don't remember. So when you would wear these two items, you would be on a horse. And uh, yeah, that was the early iteration that I remember mm. trying <laughs> and being a, a bit disappointed. But still, it was a pretty good effort to get that in-game. It uh, fortified your speed. Exactly. <laughs> I think the... I was going to say early modding years, but like I'm thinking the first 10 years of modding. Um, <laughs> It's super interesting to see how modders had to be really, really smart to make the game do things that it was not supposed to do, including using a bug to achieve something or coming up with the riding pants and the sitting pants as well. We've had those. It, oh, yeah. It's just, it's pretty cool, really, how, how they, they came up with um, unexpected ways to make the game do unexpected things. Absolutely. One of the before Tribunal was released, since it's introduced the companion system, mm -hmm. the uh, inventory sharing system. One of the early mods, uh, one of the early pack guar mods, was just a pack guar you could buy. Grumpy's. And since sorry, Grumpies, is it Grumpy's uh, mod? I'm not sure. I, I don't remember. It was so long ago. I don't remember <laughs> who made it. History <laughs> but, lesson um, in modding today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and. To give items to the pack war, so to put your items in the pack war, you had to sell them to the guar since it did not have the inventory, the, the companion system, mm -hmm. since Tribunal was not released. So you would sell your items, and when you wanted them back, you have to buy them back from the guar. And it worked because with creatures, the mercantile skill doesn't work, so mm -hmm. the item is always worth the same value. Mm -hmm. It's kind like, of like, like how Creeper. It with the Creeper. Yeah. yeah, there it is. So this was the early, the early pack guar mods. You would sell your items and buy them back. <laughs> Smart, that works. Yeah, of course. But you needed the gold though. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is just so. Um, I was gonna say, of course, nowadays we can play fetch with our pack guar. You can. Oh, yes, I you can. In uh, in three years, I think so. Oh wow. Oh, I, I, you're I in for a ride because in the last three years. The mods that we've seen in Morrowind, especially with the, the introduction of Lua. Mm -hmm. uh, among many other things, you can play fetch with your Guar. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, I'll have to get back to it. Yeah. I have to stop modding and get back to playing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, famous, famous words from any modder I've ever talked to. Yes, uh, when you start modding, you stop playing. Mm. Uh, Do you know what saved me? YouTube and then Twitch. Oh yeah, that's the way to play. That's that's the that's, that's right. the only time I actually play the game. And sometimes I go, well, we're gonna mod it a bit, but most of the time, that's um. So there you go. Another reason to to stream on Twitch. I'll have to do. I'll have to try that. <laughs> yeah, it's the only way to play. <laughs> and it's so much fun. I mean, at least for me, because. Like, I, I would cheat or reload or go, ah, oh, I forgot that. Quick load, quick save. But when you're streaming, like, you you have to go with it. And you don't have to, but it's a lot easier for me to stick to my story, to say, well, I forgot, I forgot Caius's note somewhere. Too bad, we're not doing the main quest. <laughs> Um, but, but back to Morrowind and uh, and, and yeah. you, your your first experience. So you've told us about the things that were in Daggerfall that you missed in Morrowind. Conversely, what are the things that were not in Daggerfall and you went, wow? 
from Morwen, so the, the new yeah. stuff in Morwen. Mm. Um, well, like I said before, the handmade, hand-placed dungeons and locations, items, you know, just finding a unique... Oh, I'm not giving you spoilers. Let's say you find a unique item in a certain dungeon pretty close to the starting location. There you go. I'll just Something you can that. wear on your hand? Exactly, on a finger. Let's let's, gotcha. let's say that. But we won't say more. Like that item no, could no, be no. anything. Could be anything. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Um, the conflict, the well, the, the conflicting factions. Mm -hmm. I know it was in Daggerfall. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, in Daggerfall there were uh, you could join the eight divines, but eight separate divine factions, and by jo joining one, you could not join the others. And yes, there were some political relationships between the factions in Daggerfall, but it was not really well implement implemented. So it, you didn't really see the impact. While in Daggerfall, uh, in Morrowind, sorry, when you join uh, the House Telvanni, you're gonna be hated by the Mages Guild as you rank up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there was always these rivalries between factions. That was pretty cool. It was a, a, a great way to be to feel like you're having. Uh, an impact in the world that you're playing in. So that was pretty awesome. Um, what is what else could there be? Hmm. Levitation wasn't Daggerfall, but it was much better in Morrowind. Uh, well, that's... It, maybe it's expensive. Uh, I I rare I rarely played spellcasters mm. <laughs> in any other Skulls games, uh, but I know Levitation was a really really slow spell in Daggerfall. It would levitate really slowly. And uh, while well, Morwen, you could just make your own levitation spells that have you sipping mm -hmm. by yeah. <laughs> the whole world. But yeah, Morwen uh, made spells better. Yeah, this I agree. Um, the spellmaker is better as well because Daggerfall didn't give you any limits at all. You could make the most ridiculous spell ever that would cost you hundreds of thousands of spell points, but of course you could never cast it. At least Morwen gave you some limits, mm. more or less. Even if you could make uh, your own uh, destruction spell of what, like ice, fire, poison, and shock, <laughs> hundred points all together at the same time, and just cast it once and be done with it, and hope that your opponent does not have to reflect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in that <laughs> case, you'd be in serious trouble. Um, Pretty much. So, yeah. when uh, or how did you start modding? Um, so yeah, so I started with Morrowind, of course. Uh, even before Morrowind, I, I always liked playing with in-game editors. And, you know, when I was a bit younger, so before Morrowind with uh, Warcraft 2, Starcraft, Age of Empires, I'd make my own little scenarios, mm -hmm. little maps. Uh, with Duke Nukem 3D and Half-Life as well, I'd try to make some really crappy levels. Just a two squares in a corridor and I was I was pretty happy with that <laughs> but at least with Morrowind it was much easier much more convenient mm -hmm. to mod to create stuff uh, except for scripting back then because I had no idea how that worked so I always stayed uh, away from that so I started modding with Morrowind by creating well I think like most or many modders I just made myself a house so Good I just, way to took start. It. Yeah, it's a good way to start and to get the grasp of how the construction set works with object placement and how the interior and exterior cells work. So I made myself a shack. So just a shack that I decorated, placed it in saline. So nothing too too much, no huge manor or something, just a, my own little place to stay in saline. And I even made my character as an NPC in that shack. So if I played with other characters, I could visit my first character. Nice. My G to wearing the Colovian fur helm, of course. <laughs> um, Classy. So that's how I started. <laughs> um, and also, and my brother hated me for it, but I also placed a dozen skeletons in Satanine just to see how that worked. So when he started playing for the first time, the mod was loaded. So as he got out from the census office, 12 skeletons ambushed him. So he just died and quit the game, <laughs> quit playing after that, that. That's a good strategy to make people actually appreciate Fargoth because all of a sudden he becomes the most pleasant NPC that you meet <laughs> when you leave the office. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, I understand. Um, <laughs> and the first time, I, did a, I think it, 
It's only until 2004 that I released my, I really released my first mod, so my really first mod release, and it was, I, it's still available today. I think it's on Nexus and on the all the, the older mod pages. I don't remember. The Morrowind name. modding oh. history, I would. Yes, I'd that's guess. it. I think it's on there. Uh, Word of Caution. It's a really old mod. It's pretty. I'm pretty sure it's incompatible with lots of stuff. Probably has probably has some lots of dirty edits. I just never went back to it. Um, but it was pretty cool to do. It's called Role Playing Classes Stealth Pack. Yes. Okay. I looked at and, it. Uh, I looked at it. Oh yeah. Because I wanted <laughs> to make a class mod. So I, you know, we don't want to do what's been done before. So I looked at all the class mods. Oh, wow. uh, and then uh, and then I made my own. Oh yeah, because anyway, this mod is uh, so old that uh, it can be off. I mean, it can be made better today with all the new scripting stuff. So I just wanted, since I always create stealth characters at first when I play the Elder Scrolls games, I wanted to make a mod based on some of Dungeons and Dragons, thieves and bards stuff that I found in, in the books. So it was my first release. It was a pretty big release when I look back into it. It took me, I think, a year modding on and off on it. So it allowed you to entertain in every tavern in Morrowind. So I took the scripts and dialogue from the uh, official entertainers plugin and applied it to the rest of the, uh, the, the taverns. Mm -hmm. um, it added uh, some freelance thief hideouts where you could sell your stolen stuff and buy lockpicks uh, without being in the thieves guild. Uh, also there was uh, some thieves guild challenges, some, some sort of a lock picking trap removing room with a special treasure at the end um, i did that in a house mod i've never published uh i was totally inspired by baldur's gate 2. yeah it had that mm -hmm. right yeah it, it totally fits and um yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was my first release mod it was the, the my initial plan was to release the uh, pack from this series of mods for the other like for the other type of character so it was the uh, warrior pack and the mage pack but I never I never uh, went further because it was way too much work but this is what's my first mod official mod release then I started modding for 20 years after that and what are you modding these days uh, well it's mostly Daggerfall unity these days <laughs> I, I do have two uh, two mods two work in progress mods for Morrowind uh -huh. As well, uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, I have work in progress mods for Oblivion, for Morrowind, <laughs> for Daggerfall. I don't have any for Skyrim because, well, I think that's I've modded enough for Skyrim. Um, but uh, yes, I right now I'm really doing lots of Daggerfall and Unity modding. Uh, we can double into that if you want. It's definitely like, it's just a whole another chapter. <laughs> but we can also stick to Morrowind if you prefer. <laughs> All of it because. Um, like the the difference playing the games, the Elder Scrolls games are interesting, but the difference modding them is also very interesting. And well, you have a really unique perspective, having modded most of them, all of them, uh, all of them, all Except of them, the exactly. Region, of course, yeah. Well, <laughs> that's... and Battlespire and Redguard, because yeah, that's uh, two other different games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is one Morrowind mod that is yours and is on my mod list and is never going to go away is something's not right oh cool <laughs> it's so simple it's so simple and yet a bit you know you were saying that you were talking to to npcs when, when i approach and i got the message and i would go oh that's probably whatever like like i use those messages to make my story so it's oh, good that's cool this was the goal of the mod, it was to really textually immerse you in uh, near dungeons so that you can spot and you and so that you can guess as well what's what's in the dungeon itself. Mm -hmm. So and well this comes from Daggerfall actually. I when I mod Morwen Oblivion, uh, not Skyrim, like I said before I stopped modding that. But uh, when I make mods for Morrowind and Oblivion, I like to look back at Daggerfall. It's always my inspiration. And uh, Something's Not Right is something I made for Oblivion and Morrowind. Neat. And I think it's pretty, it's even more useful in Morrowind than in Oblivion. Because since most dungeons are not marked on your world map, mm -hmm. often you'll just 
walk past a dungeon entrance and never notice it. Mm -hmm. But with this mod, you can say, oh, I see some tracks in the ground. Okay, so there's something nearby. There's, there's, gotta be there's something. a dungeon nearby. In fact, with Morrowind, you can walk past the entrance to a dungeon that you're looking for, that you had directions <laughs> to go to, and uh -huh. still miss it. Yeah, that's a class. That's a, um, whole, a whole new level of missing a door. Like the infamous uh, burial, the Urshilaku burial Urshilaku. caverns. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you go past this rock formation, you've gone too far. Okay, but when did I get past this rock formation? I don't remember. <laughs> and there's a rock that looks like a hand. And you go, that's a different quest. And I go like, but is, that, is that the one? It's... <laughs> oh, God. And even... And it was even crazier before uh, before there were the, the mods that couldn't allow you to see further mm -hmm. uh, further in the world because you could only see like 15, 15 or 20 feet ahead of you and you have to fi find these locations. And you need luck, to have your was... nose on the door to see it. True. Exactly. Um, MGE, Morrowind Graphic Extender. Yeah, that was the first one, I think. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. up to MGE XE now. Oh, okay. See, that's your. Uh, <laughs> You're gonna have to play about. Morrowind. You're gonna have to play Morrowind. I will need to absolutely. <laughs> uh, it was three or four years ago that I released two mods. Uh, it was something's not right and uh, correspondences of Morrowind, mm -hmm. which adds letters and missives all over the world just to make the world a bit more interesting. So to have a. Uh, Exchanges between NPCs and lovers and possible lovers and <laughs> love triangles and all that. <laughs> so that was pretty fun to make, but it was cool. It was pretty fun to get back to modding Morrowind uh, in that time because before these two mods, I had not released any Morrowind content for 12 years, I think. Is that because you were distracted by other games? Yeah, uh, by Oblivion, by modding Oblivion and playing games, of course, but uh, by modding other titles. So mm -hmm. it was pretty fun to get back to it. And so, yeah, so I still have two work in progress mods at the moment I, that I've, I, I'm always getting sidetracked when modding. And that's why I always take a very long time between my mod releases. I so, just work on several mods at once. Mm -hmm. So what are your two, your two projects? We're going to tell everyone. And then Absolutely, when they yeah. know about it, they'll be waiting for it and they'll send you messages and say, hey, Where's that mod you promised us early May? <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe that, that will force me to finish those two mods. <laughs> Did, oh, uh, do you know about the modding modathon that takes place in May? Uh, yes, I heard about it. It's a great opportunity it... to finally publish a mod. Yeah, yeah, it could be a good, uh, good idea. Yeah, it could be. Uh, yeah, I think I released too many Direfall Unity mods in a year. I think it's time maybe to switch back to more. <laughs> two mods a year. Least, and then you switch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the two mods I'm working on, one is a quest pack mod for the Imperial Cult. Mm -hmm. Because I, well, I find that uh, this faction does not have enough quests. And like I said, I, I'm not really uh, up to date with the uh, modding mod, with the uh, Morwen mod, so maybe there are lots of quests back right now for the Imperial Cult, but from what I remember, there are not a lot. No. There's one mod that overhauls a little bit, but it's mm -hmm. it does add some content. But it does the Temple and the Imperial Cult together, and it adds oh, a cool. little bit of tension between the two. Like, if you're high-ranking in one, you can't be high-ranking in the other. Uh, okay. It's called Religions Elaborated. Oh, that's a good idea as well. Because yeah, in the in the main game, you can be the boss of the two, the two religions. That's pretty hot. Uh, as well but, as the champion of multiple daedric lords. Yeah, you really can be whoever you want to be. <laughs> I mean, that's something I appreciate about Morrowind. That, like religion, you're free to have one, two, none, all of them. It's not realistic, but freedom to do what you want, which is cool. Yeah, that's a cool stuff. <laughs> So the mod adds, uh, so quests for the Imperial Cult, um, some of them can be completed by being a freelancer, so you don't have to be in the faction. Your reward is simply different, and you have um, a disposition boost with the Imperial Cult if you complete it as a freelancer. And well, of course, the quests come from Daggerfall, 
of course. I took the ideas, the uh, the original idea, the, the the original dialogue that I adapted for Morrowind, so to make them more complex mm -hmm. with dialogue trees, uh, skill checks as well, mm -hmm. and uh, different ways to complete those quests. Nice. And some of them have some tensions with the temple. If you you can totally take a quest from the Imperial Cult and go see the temple, see, hey, by the way, I've just been hired by the cult uh, to stop, uh, to, um, damn, uh, what is it again? Yeah, so I've just been made aware that the Imperial Cult has sent a missionary to uh, Malagmar to pray about, to preach about RK. We should do something about that. So you could, you can just sell out the Imperial Cult to the temple and nice. they'll like you instead. So, nice. <laughs> so this is what I'm working on right now. Um, and I really like doing that about quest mods, doing dialogue trees, uh, skill checks to make uh, and race checks as well, or class checks even, so that each time you play, you can do something a bit different. You can totally do a quest, uh, sword, like uh, just with your sword and kill your f ki kill the thief that stole the holy cup of Stendar, for example. Mm -hmm. But you can also barter with him. Or since uh, he stole the cup and he's not from the Thieves' Guild, you can say, well, look, if you if you don't give me the cup, now the Thieves' Guild will be after you because you're trespassing on our ground. This is if you're in the Thieves' Guild. So this, I always love, like doing those kind of things in quests. So this mm -hmm. is the first mod I'm working on. That adds replayability because with a new mm -hmm. character, you'll have a new way to complete the quests. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm always aiming for. And um, the other mod, uh, the name is a tongue twister. It's called Never Never Vereen. There you go. Never Never Vereen. <laughs> and um, in this one, you are not the protagonist. So it's kind of an alternate start mod, mm -hmm. more or less. So the main quest is disabled for your character. But instead, there's an invisible NPC who is the main character, who is the protagonist. And as the days and weeks and in-game months pass by, this NPC does the three main quests of the game. And you hear about the about the progress in the rumors. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, so I don't want to give any main quest spoilers. Um, but for instance, yeah, I know I know it's a twenty-year-old game, but yeah, but you, true, you never know. So let's um, let's exactly. tread lightly. Exactly. Here we go. <laughs> so for example. Um, when, when each quest is completed, you get some sort of a cryptic message swing, showing up at the bottom of the screen, saying like, uh, "There's been some tomb pilfering near Pelagia." That's that's not the message, but just want to reference the quest in question. So, if you ask about rumors, if you ask a Dunmer about rumors, you'll say, "Hey, I did you hear about this tomb of this?" this uh, well-known family that has been pilfered and a skull has been missing and I'm sure it's the work of an outlander they're all the same you know? mm -hmm. so you hear about the progress in game and you as the player you can totally mess up the main quest if you want uh, I mean if you go kill our good old friend Caius well the main quest ends <laughs> like, you can totally stop the, 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 invisible, the invisible NPC from completing the main quest you can mess it up so you never see this NPC because I think it would be there will be too many variables to work with, uh, mm. such as the appearance, uh, just talking with this protagonist and killing the protagonist. I'm not too sure at what I'd want that. So I, I think for the same reason that in Oblivion and Skyrim we we never see the Nerevarine. We hear about the Nerevarine, but we we don't know anything and I think it's because Bethesda doesn't want to create a conflict with everybody's version of their Nerevarine so I think in your mod having that character that protagonist being invisible and you know what happens through rumors but you never see them mm -hmm. I think that's uh, probably the best way to go yeah yeah this is why this is why I was doing it like this the only thing I did since you're not the main protagonist. I took some freedoms. So the race of the Nerevarine is chosen randomly at the start. So it, so he or she can be so male, female, any race. Yeah, neat. And has a, an, a lore appropriate name as well. Because some of the, uh, some of the 
rumors in game mentioned in the riverine by name sometimes especially the temple because at one point you'll see some uh temple edicts and taverns saying well this somebody is uh saying he is the one and that's not allowed and if you see him or her report to the authorities mm -hmm. yeah. so so i had to give the, the uh, neverine a name and a race i had to do that and um the other liberty i took as well without spoiling the main quest but as most of us who play the game know at one point you need to meet some very important people who are faction leaders and you need to get an approbation by them so i'll just say that so normally you need to speak to the faction leader but what happens if you run this mod and you are the faction leader well then the, the, uh, the protagonist will not come to you because he's supposed to be invisible mm -hmm. so and let's be honest when you're a faction leader, you never take care of your faction's business. You're always out adventuring. Delegate. Delegating. Yeah, you're always delegating. So it's your second in command who will take care of that matter mm -hmm. and will talk to you later on. So uh, the one from House Ridoran can say, well, uh, by the way, since you were away adventuring like you're always doing, <laughs> I gave my probation to this person. And you can reply like, well, you should have told me first. And you will just reply like, hey, you're always going away. Like, <laughs> you're always away. I had to take matter in my own hands for the mm. good of the uh, of the land. And uh, <laughs> if you speak to uh, Krasis Curio, uh, he'll just say, like, yeah, my little pudding, uh, I, you know, I had to do, I had to give you probation and all that. So here, just take these 500 drakes to, but, to, to be happy. And, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm really talking too much about this mod right now, but uh, no, this no, is the that, mod. That's good, because, you know, when you get modders to talk about their mod, that's how they want to work on it, and that's how they publish it. Yeah, oh, that is... <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the progress for this mod, it's it's almost done. That's the thing. It's almost finished. It's like the, the, rumors the last all... bit is the hardest bit. Yeah, it's just the little fixes I have to work on. Mm. I mean, the, the three main quests, they complete themselves pretty good uh the rumors and dialogue it's all implemented um the only thing i have to decide what to do is with the main quest dungeons um and yeah that's it i just have to decide what to do with those dungeons when the quests are completed that's the only thing i have to decide on it this is what locked me a bit on, during development because i was unsure what i wanted to do so yeah this is the other big morrowind mod that's uh, my work in progress. That is very neat. Looking forward to playing both. <laughs> Thank no you. pressure. No. <laughs> May Marathon runs up to the 1st of June. Just, Just saying. saying. Just saying. For the uh, Merwin May uh, Marine Ma Marathon. <laughs> Why not? I was reminded of a mod, like a super old mod. I think it was a bit buggy. Um, never say Nerevar. Yes, this had the uh, Giub, uh, Giub, Giub. Anyway, the in my, in my mind it's Giub, because Giub, yeah. because oh, French, but uh, where yeah. yeah. And yeah, it has Giub dancing around taverns. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> saying like, "Well, celebrate! The world is over. Uh, the the the, uh, the threat is over, and all that." Yeah, this is a pretty cool mod that disables the main quest. It's another way, but I like I like your method. So. Because there's progress, even though you're not questing yourself, there's progress and you hear mm -hmm. about what's happening. Very, very and cool. It's a concept I'd like to maybe bring to all the other factions as well, like do one where you cannot join uh, the Thieves Guild, for instance. It's locked for whatever reason, but as the days and weeks go by, the Thief Guilds uh, do their quests, so at one point you can s you can see that they've reinforced their defenses in Balmora for some reason, and mm -hmm. maybe there's a conflict with the Fighters Guild as well, with the storyline conflict I won't mention. So to, so to yeah, take this idea... Hear about a, to, a certain alchemist complaining that her diamonds have been stolen. Absolutely, yeah, there's that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'd be cool. But at two mods a year, we'll have to wait a bit longer <laughs> for this one. <laughs> Uh, well, maybe it will be quicker for factions because there are less yeah. stuff to work with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and also there's less connection with other quests. Um, yeah. 
that can be complex as well. Mm. <laughs> it's just planning stage. I have lots of planned mods that are <laughs> never been worked on. <laughs> I have exercise books, like piles of yeah. them. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, we'll get, we'll finish our mods one day for sure. Um, Never. <laughs> let's, <laughs> yeah, which is a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. Never let's uh, let's progress with the uh, with time and talk about Oblivion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Playing it. What were your thoughts? Modding it. What are your thoughts? Um, I loved it. Uh, yeah, I really liked it at first. Even if I made lots of comparisons with Morrowind, I also jumped... At one point, I jumped on the bandwagon of, well, Oblivion is bad, Morrowind is best. <laughs> at one point. But then I... I don't know. I don't know if it's because I got older or something. It's like, well, hey, it's a really cool game. And even if it made lots of things... Honestly, there's lots of things I don't agree with in Oblivion. The level scaling, the infamous level scaling is mm. one of such popular... Um, um, that's bad thing about Oblivion. Yeah. But um, I did have a good time. But I think I had more fun modding it, uh, playing with mods for Oblivion than I did with Mo with Morrowind. Mm -hmm. And this is what changed uh, the game for me. Um, but another reason why I liked it is because it was I, I saw lots of inspiration, uh, lots of relations with uh, Daggerfall. It was back to this fan typical fantasy mm -hmm. land castles and knights and counts and countesses so having played Daggerfall before I liked getting back to this uh, environment even if I was furious that Cyrodiil was not a jungle and was did not have all of that really cool lore that was found in the old uh, pocket guide to the Empire yeah and, there, uh, there is the real... a lore explanation for it and I was told about it just a week ago and I forgot I think it's something about Talos saying like, uh, mm. oh yeah, jungle is bad, let's have trees. And yes, here we go. that's it. <laughs> Thank you. That's yeah, it. I think that was it. And also Uriel Septim having hair, like growing <laughs> some hair. And he goes through so many hairstyles. Uh, maybe it's his public image, I don't know. I mean, in Arena, maybe he has he's still, beard. you know, trying to find himself. Yeah, pretty much. He, he says it in Oblivion. He's never been the ruler of his own dreams, and maybe having choosing his, his own hair was one of his dreams, and he never got to be the ruler of that. Makes that sense. I, I can go along with that. Uh, and there's Okato as well, Chancellor Okato, who has uh, also grown some hair and lost this pretty cool goatee that he had in Daggerfall. Anyway, that's <laughs> that's random <laughs> stuff. Um. <laughs> um. <laughs> I had a question, we will get back to that, uh, but a lot of people who have played Daggerfall and then played Morrowind found that Morrowind was a dumbed-down version of an Elder Scrolls game. Did you feel that as well? No, I didn't. Um, no, I, I no, I, I did find it was dumbed-down. Yes, there were some, like I said before, there were some feature, pretty cool features in Daggerfall that were not in Morrowind. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, in every... Elder Scroll release, there will always be people who say this is a dumbed down version of that, of the previous one and the previous one. Skyrim is a dumbed down version of Oblivion, which is a dumbed down version of Morrowind, and etc. 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 all yeah. the way back. And do you feel that Oblivion is or isn't a dumbed down version of Morrowind? I admit in some features, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, level scaling being the one, uh, having interesting dungeons or interesting unique loot in dungeons was pretty cool in Merwin and that was not found in Oblivion it was all loot tables mm -hmm. and so I item level scaling I mean in Morrowind it was really cool to find Daedric armor it was an achievement in itself to find a piece of Daedric armor because it was hidden in a really nice spot in the dungeon or was only obtained for the arena quest then in oblivion well when you hit level 20 or something well every every low life bandits of tugs has daedric and glass armor so that didn't make any sense mm -hmm. it didn't make any sense in daggerfall at all by the way it was the same <laughs> the same issue in daggerfall but oblivion then did a lot of things right uh the the world was pretty cool to adventure in. I, I liked the really open, like, how you could, uh, how the world was not uh, 
it was mostly plains and valleys and rivers. So it it was always a um, you always had a nice view when adventuring in Oblivion, and that was mm -hmm. something that like pretty nice. The sky again, the sky in Oblivion is beautiful, still holds up pretty good today. True. But um, yeah, I admit that some of some of the things that made Merwin unique were a bit lost in Oblivion. I think I found so the races being really different from each other. While in Oblivion, it's difficult to. I mean, the the, the dark elves. And the wood elves and the eye elves have the same voice, and they act. They well, they have the same ears, why not the same voice? Yeah, I know. <laughs> still, <you> know. <laughs> and um, there's no real racial backstory, more or less, that you had in Morwen. Um, I, I admit, I found the Imperials in in Oblivion to be pretty generic. Mm -hmm. While well, they had this pretty cool culture stuff written in the pocket guide of the Empire. And it was lost in Oblivion. Um, but at least... At least each city had its own archi architectural style. Mm -hmm. This was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, this being said, I, I enjoy every game for what they are. Because mm -hmm. it's they always take a different approach with each... Elder Scrolls games, and it's, it's the same with the uh, modern Fallout games. They always do something different. So I always enjoy those games for what they are before comparing them too much with the predecessors. Mm, true. Um, and what about modding Oblivion? Was that very different from modding uh, Morrowind? In some cases, yes. In some cases, it was much easier uh, doing quests and dialogue. This is so much easier. In Oblivion, while in Morrowind, it's just a whole bunch of topics all grouped together. And if, if you're trying to do choice-based dialogue, you have to take notes. Otherwise, you're getting lost in your answers and topics. Yeah. So this is pretty cool in Oblivion, where each quest is its own folder, more or less, with all mm. its linked dialogue. This is much easier to work with. Um, interiors, interior design is pretty much it's the same thing. It works the same way. Scripting is also pretty much the same. It uses the same scripting structure, so that was easy to get into as well. So it's more or less the same. Lots of improvements, this being said. But I think it was easier to uh, make two mods in incompatible in Oblivion than, than in Morrowind. How it was so? much easier to run into some issues, I think. Mm -hmm. Because some of the... If I take s interior cells, for example, uh, there was some information. If you, there was some information in cell in cell data that if you changed, uh, say, the lighting, it would conflict with uh, sound effects that were linked to that cell data. So if you have a mod changing sounds and a mod changing lighting, the mm -hmm. two will conflict automatically because Good. they they edit the same the same data stuff. I see. Yeah. So uh, this is this is always a bit. Of, is that how has Sorry, this has always been a bit frustrating um, in Oblivion. So, compatibility between mods. And same with Skyrim. This is even hell. It's, it's even more hell in Skyrim for compatibility hmm. between mods. Would have thought that they would have uh, corrected the issue. Well, it's. I think it's the way they built the game. It was Maybe it was easier to compress uh, some data in the same structure. Mm -hmm. So, maybe that's why. <laughs> we'll have to ask um, Todd the next time we talk to him. Oh, you will? Cool. <laughs> I will not. Can't wait this interview. <laughs> I thought maybe you might, that's why I suggested it. <laughs> uh, okay, you mentioned Skyrim. Let's, uh, let's progress through time and, and we'll finish with Daggerfall Unity, which hey. <laughs> is, well, the, the latest release, frankly. Yes. Uh, yeah, it was released after Skyrim. Absolutely. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, Skyrim, let's go. Let's do yeah. this. Mm -hmm. So, how was it playing Skyrim? It was fun. Uh, I had a good time, but it's the only Elder Scrolls game where I only played with one character. I never... Huh. I tried with a second or third. I barely played with any mods. Uh, <laughs> Maybe that's think... your problem. I'm pretty sure that's that's the problem. But the thing <laughs> is, 
I, I think I got burned out in Skyrim pretty, well, not pretty fast, but with only one character, I felt I had done everything, and I had literally done everything. I think I logged maybe 300 hours with the one and only character, and I, I don't know why I had this mindset in Skyrim that I did not have in Oblivion, which is also another game where you can do all the faction quests, even you don't have any restrictions. But I don't know why in Skyrim I felt the need to do everything with the same guy. And, also, um, the, the faction quests are not as involved and time-consuming as they are in Oblivion and Morrowind. That's a that, that's a pretty good point. The, they're, they're pretty short. You can go, you know what, I got two hours. Let's become the leader of Insert Faction. Yay! <laughs> that's it. It's It's... It's pretty, yeah. I was pretty d d disappointed by that. There were not enough unique quests in each faction, and there were so few factions. It was like mm. five or four. I mean, the Bard College does not doesn't really count because it's only like two or three quests, and you're done with it. Yeah. But the joinable faction this was pretty. The quests were fun. The story quests were really fun, really well well made and fun. But they're they're way too short. Mm. Uh, the storylines were way too short, and you would become the leader, as you said, in two hours. I mean, um, so I enjoyed the game for what it was. I really had a great time. I was really impressed. At one point, my quest log was had way too many too many mundane and story quests. I was like, how am I going to do all this? Did it all anyway. I liked the fact that they tried to do some sort of a Daggerfall-like quest system with the Radiant quests. Mm -hmm. But problem is, the world is so small that I feel that you, you're you always killing the same <laughs> togs you need to kill. You're always doing the same stuff. And the dialogue is really generic because it, <laughs> since it's voice acted, it's like, well, hi, I have a quest. Please go steal a ship from this house. And then you get a quest, la you get a quest update with the location. Mm -hmm. So doing these quests was, well, I don't know, maybe played them once or twice and I stopped because it was too generic. Um, so yeah, it was a good game for one character. I did the whole... Initially, my character was a pure thief and I got my butt kicked uh, in the early game because I leveled my pickpocket too much. So I grew up and I, I leveled up way too fast and the mm -hmm. dragons were really dangerous for my pure thief that I was. And then at one point I'd become a godlike uh, dragonborn and then became the leader of the companions, the Dark Brotherhood, the Mages Guild, even if I... Uh, the College of Winterhold, sorry. Yeah. Even if I never casted a spell at all and um, did all the dungeons, all the quests. I was like, well, look, I'm done with the game. If I do another character, it will be exactly the same game. There are no choices mm -hmm. other than choosing a side uh, for the main story, which is basically red versus blue it's just different armor and it's <laughs> the same <True>. stuff <laughs> True. so i didn't feel the need to play it again maybe if i tried with mods yes uh i'm pretty sure there are mods that restrict how the factions work so that you have to have a minimum skill to join some of the factions of stuff but i still feel like i'm, I'm burned out <laughs> i just burned out of the game <laughs> don't don't yeah. force it and anyway you have morrowind to play <laughs> so Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I think I come across as pushy. Let's make a mod. Play Morrowind. Yeah. Play Morrowind. Always make a mod. Do both. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I you said that. you modded it as well. Yes, I modded uh, Skyrim. So uh, even believe... though you, you wouldn't play the game anymore, you felt like modding it? Yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah, I felt like modding it. I modded it for like two years, maybe. I released five mods. Uh, one of them is uh, Sounds of Skyrim, which was based on uh, an Oblivion mod of the same name, which, which was Sounds of Cyrodiil. So I wanted to do an audio uh, mod for Skyrim. And um, before the creation kit was released, I got a, a PM, a, a message, private message from the uh, community manager of that time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Matt Grandstaff, I think. Yeah, don't remember. who's moved on to something else. To uh, Higgs, uh, Xbox or Bungie? Anyway, I think. Maybe Bungie. <laughs> Maybe. 
Anyway, so I got the invitation to try out the beta of the creation kit, so I took the opportunity to see, well, let's try to do some sound mods with it. So I took some some advance while we're working on that. And honestly, this mod was the first time I got so many downloads in such a short time. I was really overwhelmed. I was not expecting that at all. My mod releases before I had always got maybe, you know, two or maybe 10,000 downloads, but just like over a couple of years of time of being online. And when I released Sounds of Skyrim in the Dungeons, it was the first module, so only adding sounds to the dungeons. I, I remember it was, I released it like a Friday night, it was 7 p.m. Like, oh yeah, let's try it, let's release my first Skyrim mod. And as the evening went by, I saw the download going up. I was like, whoa, what did I do? <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> uh, I went to sleep on that and I woke up the next morning. It was, I, I think it was at around five or 10,000 downloads. Like, oh boy, what did I get into now? <laughs> it's going to be, oh my, I was really overwhelmed. It still motivated me to work on the rest of the mod. And uh, it was, yeah, yeah. I think this mod has been a big highlight of my modding time, of my time as a modder. It was getting this highly popular mod that I was not expecting at all uh, to be so popular. Then again, it was the first sound mod that was released, I think, or one of the first. And uh, the other two models were also pretty popular and all that. And I still, I don't know if some people who are listening got the Civilization module back when it was released, but this one caused, caused a huge, huge bug that will corrupt save games. Ouch. And, uh, I never, I didn't notice it at first. And yeah, this was a time when I stopped modding altogether. I just stopped modding for a whole year without even fixing the issue. By the way, if I corrupted any of the listeners' save games, I'm truly sorry. I know I said I was sorry back then because I just van I left the... I deactivated the mod, left the modding community for a year because I was like, oh man, I screwed up big time. It's too many people. I, <laughs> I want just to stop that. And the bug was... I added some snoring sound effects to some specific NPCs. Mm -hmm. So when they went to sleep, there will be a snoring sound effect that they play. So it was attached to a script. And I think it was only a comma. Like, it, there was a comma in the script that was not supposed to be there. And what it did always was... Always a comma. Always a comma, just a single character. And what it did was it, it wrote that information in the save game each time the sound would play. So like each frame or so, the save game would have some new data added to it. Uh -huh. So the save game would go from five megabytes to 500 in a couple of minutes. And I never noticed that before. <laughs> but you see, for, for the people who played Morrowind on the Xbox, where there was the issue with the save game getting bloated and the loading time would be longer and longer and longer. Oh, yeah. Well, for those people, it was like, it was a throwback, it was a flashback. It was, ah, it feels good, like uh, Morrowind. Maybe that, no, maybe, maybe that was my hidden intention, to uh, feel some nostalgia for the yeah. uh, <laughs> Xbox Morrowind. Allow me to let you experience how it was to play Morrowind yeah. on the Xbox ten years <laughs> ago, that would have been. There you go. <laughs> and what, uh, and the thing that made me come out of my, uh, I don't know, my, uh, I say that in English, my... Uh, well, you can say it in French, people will understand. My, my, <laughs> well, for my, for my vanishing, if I can say that, for my disappearance, yeah. was the uh, Mad Otter uh, Arthmore. Mm -hmm. Sent me a message like, like, hey, if you remove this comma, it fixes the, the bug. It's like, <laughs> seriously? That's the stuff? Like, <laughs> come on. So I came back online, I fixed it up, put it back online. And there it is. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I look at the downloads. It was at the millions, I, I think oh, one wow. or two million downloads. And lots of people were ask, asking about compatibility with weather mods and lighting mods because the sound effects I linked um, in Sounds of Skyrim, they were linked to the cell data, which also has the lighting 
and the weather stuff. Mm -hmm. So to make a compatibil compatibility patches for every weather mods out there uh, was way too much. Yeah. And it was too much maintenance. Mm -hmm. So at one point I just posted a message saying, you know what, Sons of Skyrim is free for the taking. Anyone who wants to keep it updated, take it. Uh, it's free for the taking. I don't want to maintain it anymore. It's way too much work. Go for it. Have fun. I got some yeah. uh, mods to create for Daggerfall Unity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about uh, Daggerfall Unity, playing it, modding it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I discovered Daggerfall Unity in 2018, I think, from an interview with the... Uh, it was by Indigo Gaming, the mm -hmm. channel called Indigo Gaming. He did a whole, pers whole perspective video on the Elder Scrolls series, and he talked about Daggerfall Unity. I was like, oh, what's that project? That's pretty cool. Joined the forums online, downloaded it, and played it, and I was, was flabbergasted like I was when I was playing every other Elder Scrolls games, like the first time I played. It was just going back to Daggerfall with some... Uh, with less bugs, actually almost no bugs at all, because Daggerfall can be called Buggerfall. Like, <laughs> so many bugs in the original. But it's always so much fun when you're sneaking and you go down the stairs and then you're below the stairs and you go, magic! Yeah, you go in the void. Yeah. yeah. You're in the void. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty You've achieved common chimed. appearance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you achieved Chim in Daggerfall before Morwen <laughs> came out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so it was awesome to go back to it, but especially the modding, the modding scene was starting back then, and so it was possible to have new quests and to have new gameplay mechanics, introduce, introducing a whole new stuff that was that only the original Daggerfall developers thought of but could not implement because they did not have the time and the manpower to do so, and it's not possible to do all that with the mods now. Mm -hmm. And this is what's incredible. And so this is why I played for maybe a year, then I switched to modding and I cannot... It's strange. Uh, as much as I loved playing Daggerfall before Daggerfall, before I discovered Daggerfall Unity, I would, I like, each year I would do myself a playthrough of Daggerfall. Let's just do some quests and play for a month or two. But now I cannot play the game anymore. I cannot, like, each time I launched the game to play, even the full modded playthrough was like, no, I have to make mods. Like. I have to modify that. Oh, there's this cool location I need to modify, so I, I cannot play the game anymore at all. I just I, I can't Cursed. Mod. <laughs> Cursed. Um, yeah. I've recently reinstalled Daggerfall Unity and I modded it, but I don't understand mods like I understand Morrowind mods. So I went ahead, I installed them, and the game is running fine and everything, and, uh, and I took all the quest mods that I could find because mm -hmm. I like those. So yeah. sometimes I would arrive at a location and I have three messages in a row and I think it's because I have three random events that are trigger. And then there's bandits fighting with bears, but behind me there's skeletons. And I was like, oh my God, what the... And, uh, and I reload. <laughs> and hope to get maybe one random event. Um, this is what happens if you have more than one mod that adds random events. They all work together. And yeah. this is and this creates a really really dangerous <laughs> gameplay. <Yeah. laughs> Maybe it's not the best way to do it. <laughs> no, no, I realize I, still, I was like a noob, game. like download, install everything and hope mm -hmm. it works. It, it, did. <laughs> it did. It did, it did work. It was pretty difficult to uh, play, but it did it did work, yeah. <laughs> so what mods are you working on or which which is the, the next Daggerfall Unity mod that you're hoping to publish? Uh, maybe three or four work in progress. <laughs> I have four work in progress mods at the moment. I have one, it's called Finding My Religion. It's a nod to an Oblivion mod I made that was called Losing My Religion. So it's a nod mm -hmm. to it. It's more or less the same concept. It's to make each of the eight Divine's temples unique with the, the, the decoration, for example. Because Daggerfall has all these locations, but the interiors are really bare bone. There's like a chair, a table, and a bed, and that's it. There's not a lot of decorations. And a naked so make, lady. And naked ladies. They, yeah, this they took the time to make <laughs> naked ladies. But they didn't take the time. Priorities. Yeah, they're naked ladies sitting on the floor. 
Mm -hmm. Sitting on the floor, uh, just naked and winking at you as well. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. This is Daggerfall for you, and you even have the naked paintings, the, the, the paintings of naked ladies that I'm pretty sure come from the old Playboy magazines of the developers back then that they just scanned and put in the paintings. <laughs> but yes, there are paintings of naked ladies. Yeah, this was a whole different era. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. but like, yeah. it's funny because Daggerfall really quite. Um, like naked bodies and the like and mm -hmm. and playable posters on the walls i didn't know that morrowind is also quite unique with all the the, the racism i think nowadays mm -hmm. to make a mod where people are so racist then again skyrim they're pretty racist too um, yeah something that was cool in skyrim they they brought back well racial <laughs> racism it's, it sounds really bad racism. to say it like that yes but yeah exactly but it made the but world more in believable. the game world in the game world yeah exactly mm -hmm. well in oblivion it was really cosmopolitan everybody loved everybody there were no racial <laughs> tensions but in daggerfall they they still have the concept where you're not always you're not everyone's friend mm. and there are some there's some racism racism in daggerfall as well the thing is when there is some involved, they use your race as, um, I mean, for, for, for example, you, you have some racial jokes in the game. If you ask any news, if you talk to commoners, they'll just say a joke about your race. Problem is, they take your player's race, and the game takes place in High Rock and Hammerfell, so with the Bretons and the Red Guard. So a Breton can make a racist joke about a Breton because you are a Breton. Like, oh, a Breton who wants to work. Ha! But you're a Breton as well. I mean, come on. <laughs> so, yeah. Racism it was, all, was also in Daggerfall. <laughs> with, with more uh, or less success. Yeah, exactly. Depending on the <laughs> on random events. Yeah, that's it. Um, but yeah, for, for mod, if, you, if we go back to the mods. Yes. So there's finding my religion, so to make each religion more distinguishable so that if you're a temple of Mara well you know you're in one you don't have to look uh, in your in your location to know where you are exactly you will see with the decorations and stuff mm. so there's a there's a maternity ward in the temple of Mara because she's the goddess of love and birth and goddess mother Mo mother goddess sorry um, if you're a temple of Julianos those there's lots of bookshelves and scrolls and parchments and all the lore stuff so that's for finding my religion. Also, I'm working in a joint project with two other modders called World of Daggerfall, which maybe you install when you try the game. So World of Daggerfall, it's a project to make the overworld more interesting to travel to. Because mm -hmm. in the original game, yes, you can venture in the wilderness, but it's just emptiness. It's only like tr randomly placed trees and rocks, and that's it. There, there's nothing to see in the wilderness. So there's no reason to travel in real time outside cities because there's nothing to see. So with World of Daggerfall, we're uh, we're making prefabs and semi locations you can visit in the wilderness. So there will be like huge mountains, huge rocks, bandit camps, orc camps, um, some uh, abandoned wagons or ransacked campsites, mm. um, small small graveyards as well. So we're reworking on making the overworld more interesting to travel to. And if all goes well, we'll also be able to make quests that point towards these locations. Because the world is so huge in Daggerfall that it's, it's still difficult to find these locations that we've made. Because the world is so big. <laughs> so, so something yeah. to, to encourage exploration. Exactly, that's the Neat. that's the point. This is what Neat. we want to achieve with World of Daggerfall. Because that's that's something we have with Morrowind, where where you get lost anyway, so you might as well look around. Uh, but then, even if you don't have a quest and you see a door to a cave, you're gonna go in. Maybe there's nothing but mushrooms in there, but maybe there's something really unique that you didn't know about. So you yeah. have that incentive to the, the game makes you curious. And mm -hmm. occasionally rewards you for being curious, which is something, well, in Oblivion, you could go and explore, but you were not rewarded, you just got lucky. 
yeah. to drop exactly, an item. Because it was only loot tables. There was mm. nothing unique in the dungeons in Oblivion. Mm. There was no way to go in the dungeon. Uh, there was no reason. Why, why, than... why go there before you have a quest? Exactly. And there are so many dungeons that don't have any quests, so there's no incentives mm. to go there. Mm. That's why, by the way, I made a, a, an Oblivion mod, a quest mod that took place only in, the, in such dungeons that have no quest related, just to make them make you go there at least yeah no that's that's a good one what is it called yeah uh, it's called tales of cyrodiil yeah okay. and it takes quests from daggerfall of course always <laughs> go back to daggerfall and adapt them to oblivion with uh, choice-based dialogue and all that nice i'm pretty sure i've played it um and of course with skyrim like even if you do see a location you say oh good to know but when there's a quest there'll be a marker mm-hmm so I'll be back yeah. later. Yeah. But at least in Skyrim, they they let you know they they update the map pin to let you know that you've cleared the place. So yes. That's another incentive, like okay, I want to clear every single dungeon in, in the game. So true. That's another reason to do it, mm. just to get a little cleared pin on it. Just playing on our weaknesses. They know. <laughs> they know what we need. We are completionists. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a hard thing to do with, honestly, any Elder Scrolls game. Let's give them that. To complete mm -hmm. absolutely everything, to clear the fog of war of the whole mm -hmm. map. Yeah. It's gonna take time. That's more difficult than Daggerfall. You don't... Um, I mean, the, the quests are all randomly generated. The only thing you can complete is the main quest. That's the only thing. For the rest, it's up to you to do... Whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, like I, I find with uh, with Daggerfall, basically I want to find a town that's got, you know, the shops I need, the guilds mm -hmm. that I wanted to join, and then that's my quest hub. That's that's it. Mm -hmm. I stay there. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh This is what I love about it. It's really a uh, dungeon and dragon simulator, more or less. Mm -hmm. yeah. True. <laughs> True. All right, let me see. We've talked about a number of games. Is there something something that you wanted to talk about that we haven't talked about? Uh, let's see, about the Elder Scrolls game, I think. I don't know if I have other stuff to say about the games, other than it's always fun modding it. I always, and I will always be modding it for a really long time. As long as I have a PC, I'll, <laughs> be, keep, I'll keep releasing mods for it. I, I always thought, obviously I have no idea since, as we've stated before, I do not talk to Todd, uh, but I've always thought that the construction set in Morrowind was almost like an afterthought. They say, you know what, let's let's give them a second CD with the construction set, because why not? Mm -hmm. like, I, I, Probably. I don't yeah. think that Bethesda knew just how huge it was to give us the construction set. It really changed the series, mm. totally. Mm. Um, because if if there had not been any construction set, would there be a Morrowind community, an active Morrowind community today? Maybe not. It's Maybe it would have been like Daggerfall. Not as Daggerfall much. Not as much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or there will probably have been some tools made by members of the community. Maybe. Uh, but to, it. Moron was released at the same time, almost at the same time as Neverwinter Nights, mm -hmm. which also advertised the whole editor. Well, basically, Neverwinter Nights was more or less a proof of concept, like, look at what you can do with our editor. You can do this game. Yeah. And I feel like Moron was about the same. It was like, look, we made the game with the construction set. Here it is, and do whatever you want with it. And that's why they had advertised it on the box. Uh, they advertised the construction set on the box. Yeah. Something that they never did on the in the other games, I think. In Elbaden and yeah. Skyrim, they did not advertise it on the box. It was only about the gameplay and story. While Morrowind was really like, you can play the game, but hey, by the way, make your own adventures if you want to. Yeah, and I think that I was think... Uh, that was genius. Whether it was a you know way not, or if it was a this this is what is going to take the franchise to another level. But, um, mm -hmm. but it certainly did, yeah, for sure. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, otherwise, well, I don't know about any other subject. Uh, I collect PC games. <laughs> yeah, I can. Uh, well, <laughs> obviously, I'm the only one who can see right now. But I confirm that is right. an impressive collection 
of uh, of PC games behind you. Me, yeah, I have a green I... sheet behind me. That's that's all I've got. <laughs> that's perfect for streaming. Yeah, <laughs> the green screen. Yeah, I, well, I started collecting PC games a few years ago because uh, as a kid, uh, back then with the big box PC games, I would always throw them away. Like I just keep the manual and the jewel case and put the rest in the recycle. Oh. Yes, when I think about that today, it hurts so much. I still remember uh, the box of Duke Nukem 3D going to the recycle, the box of the, the, the battle chest of Warcraft 1 and 2 uh, going there as well, and just throwing away all these boxes. And there are really a very few boxes I kept, and one of them is Daggerfall, obviously, and the Merwin Collector's Edition. Um, but yes, I have a... I really have lots of fun collecting those games, and I don't give myself too much pressure to collect them. I mean, I, I don't care if the box is not the best quality, and I don't want to pay a huge price, so I always buy it at flea markets and uh, thrift stores. Really, It's cheap, a treasure hunt ones. in real life. It is, yeah. and I'm not, uh, I'm not impatient to have some, some cool boxes, so it's always... So it, it took some time to... Uh, gather this little collection there but and let's and face it if if tomorrow somebody tells you hey here it is all the games you've ever liked here are all the boxes there you go that wouldn't be good it's like taking the whole fun the whole fun is not so much to have the boxes it's to find them yeah to search for them and mm. to stumble on them especially at thrift stores sometimes it's crazy or at flea markets you know you go to a flea market. There's this person selling stuff. There's, you know, there's there's a drill, there's a hammer, and then there's a big box of red alert. You're like, oh boy, and the bo big box is like two two or four dollars. Okay, all right, I'll take that. <laughs> Feign um, interest in the hammer, and then go ah, pff, okay. What about that box there? How much? Yeah, how much? <laughs> And um, and I also got a retro machine, a Windows 98 machine, because mm -hmm. it's it's fun collecting those games, but it's even more fun to play them. So I got this old uh, Windows 98 machine with the old mouse and keyboard and monitor. Is it is it a mouse that, that you have to open and you take the the ball inside out and you clean it and then you can put it yeah. back? Wow, oh, nice! Exactly. I really did Good enjoy old. doing that. <laughs> the good old mouses. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So it's something pretty fun to do to play all the old DOS games on the retro machine and just think, okay, well tonight let's play the old uh, Hell Hales Casino game. Let's play some blackjack on DOS. Why not? Why not? <laughs> and doing that. How 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 different is it from uh, from emulation with a uh, DOS box? Like, what's the difference? Um, Sometimes it can be a mess to make those games work, <laughs> even on Windows under Windows 98, uh, especially for anything sound related. Mm -hmm. uh, I found a really cheap uh, sound blaster card uh, at one point, so I plug I plug that in in the computer. So now I don't I don't really have any issues anymore with uh, making sounds work in games, but. Um, yeah, for, for some of the really old DOS games, I have lots of difficulties making them work under Windows 98. Even if I restart the computer in MS-DOS mode, um, it's pretty difficult to make them work today, to have the mouse work. Uh, yeah, you really have to mess around and be patient and look online for solutions. because At least you have that community. option. At least you have that yeah. option. So if and I understand different. properly, you have the treasure hunt finding the game, and then you have the additional quest of successfully running it. Yeah, and yeah, to making it work correctly. So mm -hmm. having the sound work, having the mouse and keyboard detected, and uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and after that, well, we're set to a good old uh, nostalgia trip. Mm -hmm. Even if most of the games I have, I've never played them before, so I just discovered them today. And I'm pretty sure I don't enjoy them as much today as I would have enjoyed, enjoyed them back then when they were released. Is there is there a game that you hadn't played before? You tried and 
you actually really, really enjoyed? Uh, yeah, I'd say out of the blue like that, I'd say uh, Ultima Underworld. Huh. Uh, I don't have it in my collection. I would love to. I don't have it. But it's one of those games. Um, so I, I, I never played that game before when I got that. I, I think it. I bought it. No, I, I got it from a PC Gamer magazine. Mm -hmm. There was a, an issue of PC Gamer that was all with all these old retro games. And one of them was Ultima Underworld. And I was really impressed by this game. It reminded me. It reminded me. me Sorry, it reminded <laughs> me. <laughs> My French is taking over. <laughs> it reminded... We've been threatening people to switch to French, we just might have to. Just, <laughs> much, just yeah. to release the stress. Un petit café, puis on continue. Oui, voilà, so on va faire ça. So, Ultima Underworld reminded me a lot of Daggerfall, obviously, because it was released two years earlier, or four years earlier, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. This was a really impressive game uh, for the time when it came out. You, there, there was levitation, and it really played. It it played like a Wolfenstein. Uh, no, maybe not Wolfenstein. More like Arena. It, it was closer to Arena in terms of technology. And um, yeah, it was levitation. There was faction di choice-based dialogue and first-person combat and then dungeon exploration. In it was a pretty scary game too. It's still scary today. I mean, you're a, you're in a pitch black dungeon with only a torch that can illuminate five feet ahead of you, and then you see the silhouette of a headless man working towards you, and <laughs> it's a it's, it's an awesome game. So yeah, that, that's one of the game mm. the old games that I discovered later on that I really enjoyed. The the Ultima games are amazing, up to Ultima Eight. I, I only played Ultima 1 and 2. <laughs> I didn't play the other la the later You, you have to play Ultima 4. Yeah. It's it's my favorite. Okay. That's so I'll good. Pass. And like the, the goal of the game is to be good. Is to be a good person. Yeah. A good avatar. Yeah. Just just become virtuous. Like what sort of game is that? Do you talk to people and you be good? Can you be evil? Yeah, but you'll never, <laughs> I'll tell you, when I played the game with my brothers, we didn't know any English. Can you imagine? You, you see the, mm. those games where combat is not exactly exciting, um, mm. traveling, and there's the sound goes, doom, 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 doom. Yeah. Brilliant. Except if you have a horse, it's doom, 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 it's faster. <laughs> um, but the whole game is talking to people, collecting clues, and we didn't know English. Oh, boy. That's... But and yet and yet we were so obsessed with that game and one day in a, in a PC magazine we got a walkthrough. Oh. And we did the whole thing, but we used a particular item, and and it's evil to use it. So when we got to the end of the game, we did everything right, but we didn't have the virtue, so we didn't win. Oh, so you but well you got the bad ending, so you still finished there was the no, game. But... You can't finish the game. Oh crap. Yeah, okay. it's like, uh, but I'm putting the secret code. Why aren't you working? Uh, because you're evil. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, Ultima is about being a virtuous avatar. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it. that's um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know that a game would work like that. Mm -hmm. You have uh, to, you have to be honest. Do not cheat. <laughs> no. So you can't play a backstabbing rogue. That's not the kind of game I like. I like playing backstabbing rogues. Well, you, you can be. You, was there a rogue class? I'm thinking paladin, bard. Maybe there was no rogue class actually. No. Oh no. But there's okay. bard. Bard is good. Oh, the bard can be yeah. Bard yeah, can be I bad, like bards. Bad. Um, <laughs> I remember something we didn't talk about. We we talked about <laughs> all the past Elder Scrolls game. Yes. Are we talking about Elder Scrolls Six? Oh boy. <laughs> I, I don't know what the game will be at all. I, um... I'm, honestly, I'm not even sure if I'll... Well, one thing for sure, I will not buy it uh, on the release day. Um, because, I don't know, I'm I'm really... When I think of the of my favorite uh, games from Bethesda, it's really in the... It, it stopped at Oblivion, more or less. Like, the games I really enjoyed and I still enjoy today, playing today. 
Ares stuff at Oblivion, even if I liked Skyrim and I liked Fallout 3 and I enjoyed Fallout 4, but only <laughs> like Skyrim only with one character. Um, I know it will take me some time to get to Elder Scrolls 6 when it will be released. I'll probably wait until there's some sort of a Game of, game of the Year edition released. Good Pretty plan. sure I'll wait. Good plan. Yeah. Then again, I say that, and maybe when they will finally announce it, who knows, maybe in uh, in June, I think, or in May, they're supposed to have their... They're supposed to have the Xbox and Bethesda showcase going yeah. on. It's in May or June, I, I forgot. So, yeah. maybe I'll jump on the hype wagon and just... Yeah, oh, maybe I like, cannot that. resist, must <laughs> yeah. play. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe Todd will cast a charm spell on me and I'll be like, okay, yeah, I need this game. I don't know. But then again, I have a pretty old computer. I right? barely upgraded the computer for a long time, so mm. maybe I won't even be able to enjoy it properly. I hear you. I want to improve my computer just so that I have better FPS in Balmora. That's it. Oh, Balmora is always a FPS. Uh, <laughs> and it's Especially with... a bonded Balmora. Yeah. Whenever, whenever I upgrade my computer, it's not very often, but my, my benchmark is install Morrowind, install your mods, and look at your FPS. And if you've gained a few points, worthwhile investment. <laughs> it's a good test. That's um, it. But if Elder Scrolls 6, like the rumors say, take place in, takes place in Ammerfell, mm -hmm. so back to the area that was in Direfall, that would be pretty cool. And I know, I, I think... They talked about making the cities more lively, like more realistic, instead of being like five houses and calling that a capital, like it was in Skyrim. <laughs> and just with 12 five. NPCs. Come and, on. 10. And the Easily okay. 10. 12. <laughs> and then having the cloud district being like three houses, four steps uh, higher than the rest of the of the village, <laughs> the walled village. <laughs> so, we will see. So who knows? Maybe it will be pretty interesting to go back to to that land. So, well, anyway, we'll see first with Starfield how it looks like. Yeah. We'll see how it goes, and yeah, we'll see. Just have also, to be patient. Yeah, and I'm curious what they will do with the uh, the voice acting, will they make the player character voiced or not, since it has been done in Fallout 4? But then again, if they do this, they have to make... They have to record voices for several races. Mm -hmm. uh, so even if they keep one one voice actor for, say, all the elves is one character, is one actor, all the Nords and humans, mer uh, men, or, anyway, I forgot. <laughs> All the man races mm -hmm. are... So anyway, if, even if they do that, they will they will have to strip down the dialogue to bare minimum stuff like they did in Fallout 4. And I don't know. I, I know. I've, I mean, it's only speculation at this point. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to. We'll have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. I think the best policy is to not have any expectations. Yeah, pretty much. And try not to jump on the hype wagon. Mm. I mean, uh, everything they show in previews, it's never exactly the game you're gonna get. It's it has always been like that. Mm. I'd say, except for Morrowind, the early preview, the, the early videos that uh, that was that were uh, narrated by Todd Howard, where they showed you like oh, you can pick these items, you can do this and do that, and that was all in. That was all the, the, the game itself, mm. so that was pretty cool. Yeah. But the each representation is normally, it's, it's not the game you're gonna get at release. So let's try not to get hyped too much. And if the only trailer is a cutscene, well, it's only a cutscene. It's not the game. Yeah. It's... It can be a cool cutscene and not be as good for the game as a game. We'll wait. We'll wait until then. Yeah. Uh, we have Morrowind to play. Exactly. Lots of mods to be released until uh, Elder Scrolls 6 and mm -hmm. even later on. Yeah, definitely. Modding never dies. No, it it's, really doesn't. It's it's awesome. Hobby for life. Hobby for absolutely. It's awesome to see how the modding community of Morrowind is so active and got through such a, a renaissance mm -hmm. in the last years. Uh, because I think after Oblivion and before Skyrim, it was 
it, it, it was less active. It was slowing down. Um, it was slowing down. Two, actress, 2014. Uh, yeah. I was talking with Dark Elf Guy. I'm rubbish with the okay. dates, but he's got all of them. 2014 mm -hmm. was the lowest point for the Morrowind modding community in terms of okay. mods being published. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it went back up and it's crazy how many... To, to the point important. that there are more mods published for Morrowind than Oblivion now. Really? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> That's really awesome. Yeah, the Oblivion modding community is, is much less inactive at the moment from what, from what I've seen. They'll have to wait until next year, where you Maybe. will be modding Oblivion again. Uh, yeah. Turns. <laughs> I still have so many mods to release. <laughs> but my backlog is pretty uh, long. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I'll agree. Uh, definitely a Morrowind revival, and I think that is probably due to the work on OpenMW mm -hmm. that is now really uh, complete and state. Well, it's not complete, complete. It's still being developed, but you can play the game normally. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you can you can play on your phone. You can yeah. play in VR. You can play with other people. So those mm -hmm. are the sort of things that attract. Um, I was going to say younger player, new generations of player. Um, then there's Lua that also gave us, you'll have to check those mods. Yeah, totally. Unbelievable mod. Um, and and probably more like a Dark Elf guy showcasing mods every week. I think also got some people were like, huh, you can do that in Morrowind? Let's take a look. Yeah. Or it's not that ugly. Might might be worth checking out. So mm -hmm, hopefully absolutely. it's gonna last, and uh, and I'll talk to you for Morrowind's thirtieth anniversary. I'll be there, absolutely. I hope I'll, I'll be, be there. there. And at one point we'll be talking about Morrowind from our retirement homes. So <laughs> we will. <laughs> that that would be you know when you look at the the features, you have to have Wi-Fi, you have to have Morrowind, and for me good cheese and coffee. Those are my requirements. That's perfect. Oh, there we go. There <laughs> That's we go. Totally perfect. <laughs> Cliff Worms, thank you so much for taking the time to talk and reminisce um, about our favorite games. It's been pretty fun. Thank you. It's fun to uh, go back to that. And uh, yeah, we will keep on modding totally. So thank you for the opportunity to. Uh, it's, it's my first interview I did. So that's cool. <laughs> After 20 years, it was long overdue. Yes, it was. I, don't don't I people know asked. that your Skyrim mods got thousands and thousands of downloads? Uh, pre pretty sure I I got asked for for interviews before, but I was always away or I yeah. didn't really reply back because I was not comfortable with doing that. So, well, um, I'm glad you changed your mind for for this time now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um. All right. We'll talk soon. All right. Bye. Have a good day. <laughs>